Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Today we're going to be chugging along on trains, different sides of the world. In fact, we're going to be going all the way to Pennsylvania. And after we leave Pennsylvania and we buy stocks in different companies, we're going to be heading to the other side of the pond. We're going to be going around the United Kingdom, along with France and Wales and Scotland. We're talking about Ticket to Ride. This is both the Pennsylvania map and the United Kingdom map. It's a double-sided board with two completely different ways to play Ticket to Ride. This is the expansion map number five. You need one of the base versions of Ticket to Ride to play this, and you need to kind of know how to play it, the regular game to understand how I'm gonna show you how to play this. So let's take a look. I'm gonna show you both sides, how to play, and then I'll give you my final thoughts. Is this the best map around? I've been dying for this thing to come out. Let's take a look. Here's the Pennsylvania side of the map. I'm going to assume you know the rules to regular Ticket to Ride. I'm just going to talk about the differences in the Pennsylvania version right now. Well, the map itself is pretty wide open here, but you'll see that there's different places, not just Pennsylvania. There's Baltimore, there's Philadelphia, there's Atlantic City. And you come up here and we'll see New York and all different areas around Pennsylvania. At the beginning of the game, you're going to get five destination tickets. From the five, you have to keep at least three of them. And they range anywhere from three points all the way up to 22 points and everything in between. Now, when you discard tickets in this game, uh, just like the original game, you would take the tickets you discard and you put them at the bottom of the pile. Later on during the game, when you take extra tickets for a turn, you've got to take four of them and you keep at least one. That's how the destination tickets work in this game. Now, this game does have a couple of spots that have ferries, and this was, I think, originally introduced in Europe, the game uh, Ticket to Ride Europe. And for here, you essentially would need to play a wild locomotive card for each of these, and then any color. So here, it's basically just a wild card to get there, and here it's going to be two wilds and one of any color to get from Erie to Ontario. Now, the main difference in this game is really the stocks. So if you build from here to here, using two blue or wilds or whatever, there's one of these three stocks that you can take, and they're here right there on the board. Now here's the nine different stocks in the game, and because I had built here, I could have taken any one of these three. So this is this one, uh, this one is Pennsylvania Railroad, and this one is Reading Railroad. Now they differ from each other. For example, Pennsylvania Railroad has 15 total shares in it, where New York Central System only has five, this one has 10, this one has six, and so on and so forth. So if I pull this one up, I'm going to take this and I'm going to put it, all the stocks goes face down because all the backs, regardless of which stock you have, has the same back. So people won't be able to tell what you have. They got to kind of remember. Now, at this point, if someone's buying this, they see that number two of 15 is here. So they know that one was taken. So people can always kind of work their way back to know how many total were taken just by looking at the number there. Now, at the end of the game, whoever has the most of these is going to get certain points. So this one has the most shares. If you get the most of these, you'll hit 30 points. If there's a tie, whoever has the number closest to one first wins. Uh, so there's no ties for the stocks. And depending on what place you're in, you'll get different points. So this one has 30 points for first place. But we come down here and this one only has two shares. And for first place, you're getting seven. Second place, you're getting fourth. So if you get one of these, you're guaranteed first place because there's only two of them and you got the first one, which essentially is the tiebreaker. And some of these, you know, first place is 14 points, but there's seven and uh, first place is eight point and there's three. So that's how this works. At the end of the game, you essentially, we go through each one of these stocks and we score that. And there's also a globe trotter bonus. Whoever has completed the most tickets gets 15 points. If people have tied for the most, they also all get 15 there. Now there's a two player variant. Let's say you built here and you take one of these. You also take any one of these and you put it face down for a dummy player. So whoever builds it gets to choose which one goes to the dummy player. At the end of the game, the dummy players get shuffled and half of them rounded up are actually used. So you're trying to put things in here that your opponent is fighting for. And your opponent's trying to put things here that you're fighting for, and it may or may not. you got a 50% chance that the cards you put here pretty much are going to get picked and go against your opponent at the end of the game because this these will score just like a player is one of the dummy players. So it kind of splits things up that way. Now, the UK map is a elongated way up and down, and we see France on the bottom and the bottom right. We see England there, and we see up on the left we have Ireland, and we have Scotland up there. And let's take a closer look of some of the things that make this map very different. Now the destination tickets in this game you'll get at the beginning, you get five of them. And from those five, you have to keep at least three. And they range anywhere from one point 
all the way to 19 points. This is one that goes to a country. So from either spot in France up to Glasgow is 19. You'll get five if they keep at least three. Any ones that you don't keep go discarded at the bottom of this pile. Later on the game, four turn, if you want to get more cards, you take three and you keep at least one. Now another big difference is this game comes with its own sort of train card. So you don't use the train card from your normal base ticket to ride uh, that you may have, which is like Europe or, or the, the regular United States one, because this one comes with six additional locomotives. So you just use the train ticket, uh, the train cards that's in this version, not the base version. And you only use 35 of your trains instead of the 40 that you'll be placing out. So you actually have less trains in this game. Also on this map, we see the ferries, which I just spoke about from the other side. And they work the same way as that. Now also, normally you take it to ride when you're grabbing the different train tickets. If three of the, uh, of the cards come out that are wild, typically you retake all these, put them in the discard, put five new ones out. In this game, that does not happen. The wilds always stay out because this game is all about the wilds. Remember, there's more wilds in here than the normal deck. Also, at any given time, any four cards can become a wild so if i have any any four cards so i could have one two three four in my hand and i could turn these in to use them as one wild so why is this game all about wilds why are there more wilds why can you put in just four cards of any type for a wild what's this well at the beginning of the game two things you can only build anywhere from a england to another england so for example i could not build from here to here because this is wales this is not england because of that nut marker there all of these that have this england marker you can do in addition to that only going from england to england at the beginning of the game you can only do routes of one or two so i could go here because it's only one route i can go from here to here because it's only two uh, but i couldn't go from say here to here because it's more than two so it's one or two and only from england to england to start the game this is where the wilds come in because at the beginning of your turn, you can turn in wilds to buy one of these technology cards that help you do things. For example, this is just one card, and if I turn it in, I can take this technology and put it in front of me. This is Ireland and France concession. So now I can travel not only from England to England, but England to Ireland, Ireland to France. Those now I can go to three regions. This one, if I get this one, I can now go to Wales. Here I can now go to Scotland. Here I can actually use ferries now because at the beginning of the game you can't use ferries either. So I have propellers to be able to do that, but this one costs two wilds to do it. So at the beginning of my turn, I could put it in two wilds and get the propellers. This is a mechanical stoker. So it's one wild, but now I can use this to you to get three routes where one, two, three, where before you can only do one and two. The steam turbine, I have to turn in two wilds. And in this case, you get two extra points anytime you use a ferry route. In this one, you gotta use two wilds to get it. And now you can trade in three cards for, for a wild, for a locomotive or before. Normally it's two in this game. The double heading, this gets you two additional points for every ticket you've finished. The superheated steam boiler, it's two wilds. Oh yeah, by the way, this one is four wilds you have to spend to get that, by the way. This one you spend two, and now you can build on four, five, or six routes. Boiler lagging gets you, it's two wilds, and it gets you one additional point, basically, for any uh, anywhere that you've gone, really. And finally, we have the right of way, which when somebody is built on something, normally you can't build there. But this allows you, after spending four wilds, it's a one-time use. There's only one of these cards. You take this, you do it, and you put the card back. So if there's someone built there, I can build next to them, even though normally I couldn't. So this was that one-time use right away, but some of these have multiple cards, like the whales has a bunch of cards. A lot of them have multiple cards that you can use because you put them in front of you for the rest of the game, where this one is a one-time use. Now here are some advanced technology cards that you can use. The thermal compressor is a one-time use. You spend one wild and you can claim two routes at once. Obviously you have to still play all the cards that you need, and it's a one-time use and it comes back to the table. The equalizing beam, you spend two wilds and you get this, and if you have the longest train at the end, you get 15 points. If you don't and you have this card, you get minus 15 so you're really betting you're going to have it also like that the risky contracts two wilds if you have the most completed tickets you'll get 20 points if not you'll get minus 20 that could win or lose a game the diesel is three wild and there's only one of these and you can basically build for one less card so if something usually takes three cards to get there you can use two and the water tenders it's two wilds and instead of drawing two cards off the top from the blind deck to get more 
uh, to get more essentially more more train cards you get three and those are all the technologies now this map is only between two and four players and this one essentially if there's two players only one of these two routes are okay three or four players they're both okay and just so the board here it has a normal scoring just like the normal ticket to ride of how you get stuff and here it just shows you the beginning of the game you can only go to england one or two routes no ferries four cards is a wild and uh, if you get more tickets, it's three and keep one. So this is sort of the iconography that helps you. There's only 35 trains and things like that. You get five and three to start the game. And then you get four cards and things like that. There's also this special route here that's, wow, 40 points. But you got to build all the way from South, Southampton to New York. This is the only one that you can build uh, at the beginning without having another, uh, you know, you can build on this one. Even though sometimes you can't do ferries or you can't go from England to somewhere else. This is the only route that kind of breaks that rule. Last year I did my top 100 videos of all time and Ticket to Ride was my second, number two, favorite game of all time because it's very accessible. I brought more people into the gaming hobby than any other game with Ticket to Ride and, and I love it and gamers like it too. Now how does this map feel with all the other ones? Well, it's, it's pretty different. I love the double-sided maps in the first place. You know, Africa was by itself, Netherlands was by itself, but the other maps were, were double-sided and I loved having the double-sided map. So check mark there already. Now let me talk about the two different maps. The first side there, then let me talk about Pennsylvania first, the easier side. All right, I gotta call Days of Wonder out here. Now look, Days of Wonder, I love you. You're one of my favorite publishers. You make some of my favorite games, awesome components, great artwork, games are great. I look forward to your one game that you release every year. But, okay, in this map, the, the rules say you have to change, you basically use the normal ticket to ride rules unless it's stated here. And then under the scoring section here, it talks about the stock scoring and it talks about the Globetrotter bonus. On the map, there is no place at all that shows you how many points you get for how many tickets you, uh, for how many trains that you play. So it looks and appears like, well, you don't get points for playing trains. It's clearly not on the map. I don't see that ever. And the rules specifically state about scoring stocks and Globetrotter bonuses and don't say, by the way, score your trains as normal ticket to ride. And there's a seven route, which isn't even in the normal ticket to ride. So how much do you score for that? You cannot be leaving things out like this if it's that important to the game. I'm very disappointed in this because the first time we played this without scoring for the trains, just the stocks. And quite honestly, it was awesome. It was tense. It was fun. Not knowing people's score was awesome. But that's not the real way it's played, and it's inferred, but not really. Come on, Days of Wonder. You did this with the first, the 10th anniversary Ticket to Ride, where you you put in all the cards for the, the mega, the, you know, the mega routes and all that. And there's three different ways to play that game, depending on which routes you want, the big cities, the mega, the, you know, the, all of them together. And there's different tickets for different ones, and you didn't put anything in there at all about those different things there. This is twice in the last two years that you've really screwed up the rules, and I'm just calling you out, I love you, but... You're bigger, better, and you should know better to pay a little bit more attention to this because you're held at a higher standard because of that. Now, let's move on. Uh, a lot of things to like about this one. You might look at that and go, huh, it's not really changed that much. Wow, it feels completely different for a few reasons. As you're going through and you're trying to do your routes and you're looking at the stock, you're watching what other people are taking. And even though this, everyone's stocks are face down, I liked it that way because if everyone's stock was face up, it would just be AP prone because you'd be stopping, you'd be looking at how many they have, how many you have, you'd be looking where to go. When you're looking at the stocks, the interesting thing is like, oh, I could, you can look at your stocks anytime and you're like, oh, okay, I've got two of these and I've got the number one and it, the, the next one there says share five. So you know that there's four of them out there, you know you have two of them, and you know you have the first one, so you have the tiebreakers. At this point, you're like, I know I've got the lead here. And so even though you can't see anything, there's still enough information on the cards to kind of deduce where you are in that. So I like that. I love the fact that you can do these, the, some of the, the larger point ones that have many, like the Pennsylvania Railroad has, I think, 15 cards, and the first place gets 30 points. And those routes, because it went all over America, are, are all over the place. Where some of those other regional ones, the smaller ones, are regions. So when you're building, it's like, oh, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna be in this region building this route over here, and I can grab a bunch of these little regional ones, maybe two or three, maybe two, and I'll I'll get that. And it's always this thing of like, huh? Do I I want to get one card of this one? I'm not gonna win it, but I'll just do one just to get in on it, maybe get third place. But this other one, maybe I'll get a little bit more. So it's this really interesting battle of trying to figure out where my roots are going, which stocks I want, what have other people been taking. At the beginning of the game, it's like, I don't know what to take. But then as the game goes on and you see what people take, where people are going, it becomes a lot more focused and very enjoyable. I love this. This was a very fun version of Ticket to Ride. One of my favorites. 
Now the other side of the map, completely different. Everyone up to this point said Marklin is the gamer version of Ticket to Ride. No more. <laughs> UK is the gamer version of this. It's so different. I mean, you can only build in England, only build one or two. Four cards is a wild, you know, and it has its own deck of cards where you have more wilds. It, to me, this is sort of the heaviest version Ticket to Ride out there. I think Euro gamers are going to like this one. It really felt like a resource management game where wilds were the resource. Because even though there's six more wilds in this deck than a normal deck, you think they'd be popping up here and there, and they don't... It's hard because you've got to use your wilds sparingly because you need them for fairies, but you need them for technologies. Anywhere you go, if you want to do a three route or go to a different country, you're going to use a wild to do that. So you want to use them sparingly. You want to pick out your cards to the point where, you know, you got to you got to use them smart. But you take five cards at the beginning and you have to keep three of them. So right off the bat, a lot of times you're kind of forced to go into a route that you know which technology you're going to have to at least get first. Uh, and so it's a really an efficient game here. You're trying to be as most efficient as possible using those wilds. Some of those things are those engine building where you can, you know, spend one card less than normal uh, and things like that. So it's sort of like an engine builder, efficiency, resource management feel to it. It was heavier. It was very cerebral, very thinky, very different from any version. Definitely the heaviest. I liked it. Uh, I like how it's very different. I mean, it doesn't mean it almost doesn't feel like Ticket to Ride, but it is. Um, and, it, and it's very heavy and I like it, but for me, uh, and this, this one has probably the most replayability because it's like, there's so many different paths you can go. I like that you can bet on, you know, I'm going to have the most cards done or I'm going to have the longest train and you bet on that. And if you do, you do great. If you don't, you're getting hammered. A lot of gambling there in those advanced technologies. Overall, I loved this one, but at the same time, I liked the other side better because it was just simple and streamlined and fun. Where the other side was very cerebral, very thinky, and very Euro-y. A little too much for me to say it's my favorite one. So the other one, this, that one felt a little bit more like work. It was still intriguing. It was still a very fun experience, but not like, hey, let's have fun, let's do this, that. It was more like, okay, what am I going to do? And, and you're just very, it's a quiet game of Ticket to Ride, where you're really thinking about things. Very different. So how does this fit into all of them? I can't say it's my favorite map of all time. It's up there, it's probably my second favorite map because it is so unique, so different, and so fun. I think my favorite is still the Switzerland India, where Switzerland's my favorite two-player version of Ticket to Ride. India is a very good version with interesting bonus scoring. That's probably my favorite total package extra map, but this one's right behind it on its heels because it's really fun. So if you like Ticket to Ride, get this no-brainer. If you have not liked Ticket to Ride in the past or you're burnt out on it, get this one because it feels so different it might rekindle your love for it and that's the map pack five let's induct this into my gaming library properly with a saxophone serenade 